Welcome back to 30 Days of Ableton Push. I'm Josh Spoon. Today we will talk about the note sequencer hack. It's not necessarily a hack, but it's good to have in the title card because it pulls people in. But it's a way to use the drum rack sequencer on notes. Okay, so let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is use my mouse and I'm going to drag in a drum rack. I'm going to go to the audio, enable the track. Actually, let me set audio in resampling, then that will open in, in enable. So then what I'm going to do is do something similar to making a dummy clip. I'm going to record audio where there is really no audio, allowing Ableton to believe that it's triggering audio in a drum rack when it's actually not. So we're going to click on drum rack and then drag this audio over. And I'm just going to do a major scale. And I'm going to option and drag. I think that's control drag on PC. And then just do the major scale. And so what you could do after this, if you wanted to, you didn't want it to be in C, is you could use a scale plugin or move it up and down once the notes are plugged in to the, be able to get the desired key that you want. But for this simple purpose, I'm just using C major. Next thing to do after this is to select an instrument that you would like to play. I'm going to choose a bass a simple electric bass because it has staccato notes, shorts, uh, sustain, and it's very good for using with a sequencer. So let's go to packs. And if you have suite, if you download guitars and basses from the Ableton site, you will get uh, these bass sounds. So I'm using the bass open. And I just drag that in there. And what we need to do is we're going to run the MIDI data from the drum rack out of that sequencer into the bass and then the sound will run out of the bass. So we're going to do MIDI from drum rack and it's already enabled so we don't have to do monitor in and then we can just come back over to drum rack and let's give it a test. Alright, so we hear the bass, and if you need to go higher in octaves, you can. You can use the trick that I showed yesterday to be able to go up and down, or you can just punch it in and then switch the octaves at a later time, either on the push somehow or, you know, on your laptop. So now all we need to do is program in the notes. I'm gonna put the fixed length at one bar so we can just simply start programming something. make this note longer, we can take the note out and then we can just play it. So it 
it'll keep it. It'll keep that longer note in there if we play it. If not, it'll keep that short sixteenth note. So experiment with this. It's a very easy way to sequence your notes since Ableton hasn't come out with a standard uh, note sequencer for Ableton Push, though there are other alternatives out there, and I'll be talking about those in the coming days. So thank you guys for watching, and have fun. Head over to blog.dubspot.com to read my latest article, Four Reasons to Build Your Own Ableton Live Racks. Also, if you're looking for more personal instruction on how to use Push in Ableton Live, you can send me an email at josh at joshspoon.com. If you're in the LA area, we can definitely find a way to meet up and meet your musical needs. And if you are not in the LA area, we can link up through Skype and talk about ways to help you out in that area. Once again, this is Josh Spoon, 30 Days of Ableton Push, and I'll see you tomorrow.